floating in the snow. Stand, people, Sister May. I'm going to ask Sister May just to open for us in a word of prayer. Thank you. Father in the Yamal, Obir the Eer, Yere, as us for the Dammar, and us as for the Blade, for your Dinah, what Eons Bavara, that us for more of you and the Eis van Eater can be us. Heere, David het gesê, het was goed gewees om na die huis van die Heere te kan gaan. Heere, vanmorgen, Heere, is ons blij en dankbaar dat u ons siele losgemaak het. Betijds, Heere, van ons dank, Heere, op hierdie dag. Hoeveel mense vier hierdie dag met verskillende dinge. Maar vanmorgen is ons weer blij dat u ons pad omgekom het. Heere, ons het u nie geken nie, Heere, maar u het ons siel net betijds losgemaak, Heere. En ons dankbaar, Heere, 
waar alles wat u beteken ons lewe. Vanmorgen, Heere, Jesus, weet ons, kan die sonne u lewe nie, Heere. Vanmorgen kan ons ook die sterwe sonne u nie, my God. Ons het die jake minuut sekondes het ons vir u nodig. Ons prijs u ons heerlijk vir God die Vader, wat sy enigste boere Seen Jesus gestuur het, om te sterwe op die kruis van Golgotha, so dat ge niemand verloren mag gaan nie, maar allemaal die eeuwige lewe beherwe, en ons glo vanmorgen op hierdie dag, jyre, hierdie dag sien jy, jyre, ons weet my God, jyre, dat jy is in ons midde ook vanmorgen, ek bid dat jy van hart tot hart gaan vanmorgen, Ons het vanmorgen ingekom met verskillende gedagtes, verskillende harte, jyre. Baie van ons is vanmorgen gepreek vanmorgen. Baie van ons vanmorgen het syklik ingekom. Maar vanmorgen laat ons gedagtes na jy doen met neem vanmorgen. Heilige geest wat oog vanmorgen, jyre. Want jy sê wat doe en drie in my naam vergader, daar is ek in die midde. Jy is God, jy is mooi, jy is barre maartig en jy is liefde, Jere Jesus. Geen mens op aarde kan vir jy menigvuldig met jy na ge iemand nie. En vanmorgen prijs ons hartloop oor verdankbaarheid vir die kruis van Golgotha. Vanmorgen bid ek dat jy vir ons morgen kom sien. Ja, ke boorkie wat uitgaan vanmorgen. Ek bid vanmorgen self die woord kom sien het. We gaan van hart tot hart, Jere. Jere. En die naam van Jesus. Ons sê vir jy baie dankie wat jy vir ons vanmorgen gaat doen. Ons prijs jy ons hier vir jyrlik hier. Baie dankie. Amen. Baie dankie. Die baar is jy mag hou sit vir een paar minuten. Amen. Terwijl ons gewag vir die span om in te kom. Greetings in the wonderful name of our Lord and Jesus Christ. Good morning everybody. Are you excited to be in the house of the Lord on a Friday morning? Yes. Hallelujah. Sorry for my voice, my... You know, we're going to sing the whole week, so the voice is not so 100%. But this morning, I'm so glad for that uh, we are in the house of the Lord. And this morning is a... It's a very important day, man. It's a great day. Because what was it for this day? So, we're here to be here. Amen. Come on, let's... Ons nog langer as die mense lekker verwelkom. Let's sing a welcome chorus. And I want you to feel free just to hug or just say welcome to the people, to your neighbor next to you. And just say welcome in the house, especially on a Friday morning. Amen. Is there any welcome, sir? Welcome. There's a welcome here. Come on, let's stand, people, and just hug and greet everyone. Amen. Praise God, there's a welcome here. There's a welcome here. There's a welcome here. There's a Christian welcome here. There's a welcome here. Welcome here. There's a welcome here. There's a welcome here. There's a Christian welcome here. There's a welcome here. There's a welcome here. There's a Christian welcome here. There's a welcome here. There's a welcome here. There's a Christian welcome. Everybody to be happy. We want everybody to be happy. I want everybody. I want everybody to be glad. I want. We want everybody to be happy in the Lord, and we don't want everybody sad. I want everybody. We want everybody to be happy. 
want everybody to be there. I want. We want everybody to be happy in the Lord, and we don't want to say. Yes, welcome here. Yes, welcome here. Yes, welcome here. Yes, a Christian. Now let us stand, people. We're just going to do one song and then after we're going to do the tithes and the offering. You know, what do you normally do when you get your meal in? Say, for instance, you get your food or whatever. You just say, thank you. Yes. We say thank you for this beautiful day. We say thank you, Lord, for your love. But this morning, we just say thank you for the cross. Yes. And to this morning, we can only say, worthy is the Lamb. Morning, Kobe. How are you doing? Come on, let's thank you for the cross, Lord. Worthy is the cross, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for the cross, Lord. Bearing all my sin. Bearing all my sin and shame. You came. We love you, Thank you. Thank you for the love, Thank you for the nail pierced hands. Thank you for the nail Wash me in your cleansing. Wash me in your cleansing. Crown him now with many crowns. Crown him now with many 
of him and crucify him. The God of heaven crucify. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. Your name. We bless your name. Praise God. At this point in time, I'm going to ask Sister Carol Baltus just to pray for us for the tithes and the offering. Thank you, my sister. And then we're just going to do one more item. Then after that, I'm going to give over to the worship team. Amen. Hallelujah. Can we close our eyes? Father, we just want to thank you, Lord, for this day, my God. Because this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice. And be glad in it. We thank you for another week, Lord, that you have carried us, my Father. And this morning, as we bring our tithes and offering before your throne, we pray, Holy Spirit, your blessing upon it, my God. Even those that will use it, my God. Give them the wisdom, my God, to use it unto the extension of your kingdom. Bless us now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise Amen. God. While we're going to take up the tithes and offering, we're going to sing Victor's crown. Amen. And after that, I'm going to give over to the worship team. You are welcome. You can feel free to bring up your tithes and offerings. Victor Scrum, my brother. You are always. You are always fighting for us. Heaven's angels all around. A mighty light is finding a way. For you wear the Victor's crown. I like a night You're my savior and my friend. By your grace, I love and wait to worship you. Hallelujah. At the mention of your greatness, oh, in your name I will bow down. Give your praise and every side. Oh, oh, you wear the victor's crown. Hallelujah. Let your glory fill the circle. Oh, it's a power overflow. By the grace I love and breathe to worship you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have overcome. You have overcome. You have overcome. Hallelujah. As the laws become the vow, you can never be defeated. Hallelujah! For you wear the victor's crown. You my Jesus. You're the hope of the world. By your grace, I love and breathe. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Yeah. 
Good morning, church. Oh, uh, we would like to bless you with a scripture reading from Luke 23, verse 11 to 22, and it is from the New International Version. Then Herod and his soldiers ridiculed and mocked him, dressing him in an elegant robe. They sent him back to Pilate. That day, Herod and Pilate became friends, for before... They were enemies. Pilate called together the chief priests, the rulers, and the people, and said to them, You brought me this man and as one who was inciting the people to rebellion. I have examined him in your presence and have found no basis for your charges against him. Neither has Herod, for he sent him back to us. As you can see, he has done nothing to deserve death. Therefore, I will punish him and then release him. With one voice, they cried out, Away with this man! Release Barabbas to us! Barabbas had been thrown into prison for an insurrection in the city and for murder. Wanting to release Jesus, Pilate appealed to them again. But they kept shouting, Crucify him! Crucify him! For the third time, he spoke to them. Why? What crime has this man committed? I have found in him no grounds for the death penalty. Therefore, I will punish him and then release him. Amen. And 
Da un dovilia dolorosa in Jerusalem that day The soldiers try to clear the narrow street But the crowd pressed in to see the man condemned to die on Calvary He was bleeding from a beating There were stripes upon his back And he wore a crown of thorns upon his head And he bore with every step The scorn of those who cried out for his death down the Via Dolorosa Called the way of suffering Like a lamb came the Messiah Christ the King But he chose to walk that road Out of his love for you and me down the Via Dolorosa, all the way to Calvary. Por la Via Dolorosa, triste día de Jerusalén, los soldados le abren paso. Al Jesús, más la gente se secaba para ver que llevaba que ya cruz por la vía dolorosa y la vía del dolor por la vía vino Cristo.
What does the cross of Jesus mean? It's more than songs we sing Much more than legend on your chain But it means I am free From the chains of slavery And the blood the church won't let my sins remain upon the cross my savior died the lamb was crucified showed us love that this world has never known oh what love divine to a love you'll never find So that we might love, love came and died alone While the cross will always represent The love God had for me When the Lord of glory heaven sent all in Calvary just for me, yeah, just for me. Jesus came and did it just for me. Help me say, while the cross will always represent the love God has for me. When the Lord of glory heaven sent, they brought on Calvary just for me, me, just for me. Jesus came and did it just for me, just for me. That cost a life That paid my way Death its price And when it flowed Down from the cross My sins were gone My sins forgot there is a grave that tried to hide this precious blood that gave me life. Then in three days he breathed again and rose to stand. 
may have the most you may have all the treasures in the world but there is nothing more valuable than the blood of the lamb for we were not bought with silver or gold but with the precious blood of the lamb and his blood that he shed on Calvary cleansed us from all our sin. And we want to give God praise. Hallelujah. What shall we pay? What shall we pay for what he did for us? Sometimes you don't need to sing a song. I think there's an echo on the mic. Sometimes you don't need to sing a song. Sometimes you don't need somebody to wind you up. Sometimes you don't need anyone to motivate you to do something. Sometimes you just need to say thank you. Sometimes you just need to praise God. Without anyone pushing you. Without anyone saying, stand up. Just giving thanks. And when those moments arrive, that's when you just let go. And you forget what happened at home. And you forget what is waiting for you at home. And you forget what happened to you last week. And you forget all your problems all your worries, all your concerns and your cares, your difficulties. Because the only thing that matters is Christ. And if it had not been for Christ, we would not have been here this morning. And so this morning, if your heart is overflowing with praise, I'm going to give you a moment to do whatever you want to do. If you want to run around the building, Pastor Kubis. If you want to jump up and down. If you want to just kneel down. If you just want to lift your hands. But just for this moment, we're going to open our hearts and we're going to praise God. And you do it just the way you want to do it. 
give thanks to him for this moment. You may never get another moment like this. Just praise him this moment. Just praise him, just praise him, just praise him. Just give him praise, just give him praise, just give him praise. You know what he did for you. You know what he did for you. Hallelujah. Oh, we bless you this morning. We praise and we uplift your holy name this morning. We thank you for your goodness, for your grace. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your kindness. We thank you for your mercy. For they are new every morning. We thank you for your grace, unmerited favor. We thank you for your love. Oh, boundless, endless love. Hallelujah. There is no end to the depth of your love, thank to you, the Jesus. height of your love, to the length you, and the breadth of your love. There is no end. Your love is perfect. And this Amen. morning we bless you, Father. Amen. This morning we praise you. We uplift you. We glorify your name this morning. We thank you. Oh, we worship you this morning. For you are good. You are good. You are good. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, mighty God. Mighty God, mighty God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let's give the Lord a hand of praise. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Now, whether you were vocal or whether you did it quietly in your heart, it doesn't matter. The Lord sees it. Amen. Praise God. This morning, I want to greet you in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I thank the Lord for this wonderful opportunity that we have this morning. I listened to a song this morning. It's one of those old songs. Jesus paid it all. Jesus paid the price. He paid it all. There was nothing I had to pay. There was nothing I had to give. He paid it all. And I'm grateful and thankful this morning that I didn't have to do anything in terms of paying the price. He paid it all. Jesus paid the price for your sins. Why? You see, sometimes we just accept things without asking why. Jesus paid the price for your sins and for my sins. Why? Colossians 1 verse 14 says, God's son, Jesus, paid the price for our sins and made us free. Yes, God has forgiven us. That's from the easy version. God's son, Jesus, paid the price for us and made us free. Father, we thank you for your wonderful word and we thank you for the presence of your Holy Spirit. Pray this morning that you will touch our minds and our hearts, not only here in the auditorium, but also the hearts and the minds of those streaming the service this morning and those who will be watching it later tomorrow, late in the week and maybe next week. But whenever they come across this service, 
I pray that the Spirit of God will continue to touch hearts and minds. I pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Praise God. Isn't it amazing the way the Spirit of God is allowing us to make use of technology? If we didn't have the technology we had today, this service would have been restricted only to this building and only to the people in this building. But technology has now made it possible for us that people can watch this service two weeks from now, even 30 days from now, and still get touched, and still get saved, and still get delivered. That's amazing, people. I tell you, we're living in wonderful and amazing times. And we thank God. Yes, technology is sometimes used for bad, but in this case, we trust God that people's minds and hearts will be touched. Amen. Jesus paid the price for our sins. Why? Because God loves us. That's the why. Jesus paid the price because God loved you. John 3 verse 16. God loved the people in the world so much that he gave his one and only son to save them. As a result, everyone who believes in the son will not die. Instead, they will live forever with God. Reason why? God loves us. Now, let's bring it down to our level. You may be sitting next to someone you love. Right? Jesse and Leslie are sitting next to each other. And there's a whole lot of love going on there. Right. But Jesse loves me as well. But not on the same level that she loves a mom. That's a totally different love. It's a deeper love. It's a more meaningful love. She loves me because I'm a pastor. And that's a different kind of love. And Jesse may not have the capacity to love all of you equally the way she may love me. And so she, she may love me a little bit more or differently than any of you. Just because I'm the pastor. And the same goes for you as well. But when one looks at the love that God has for us, He doesn't differentiate. God loves all of us the same, no matter who you are. Jesus is not going to love any other woman because it's a woman and the woman reminds her of a mom. No. But it doesn't matter who you are, whether you're black or white or green or gold, whether you're rich or poor, whether you're smart, intelligent, or not intelligent, whether you're tall, short, fat, long, broad, it doesn't matter. As far as God is concerned, God loves us all the same. And so Jesus paid the price for our sins because God loves us. Romans 5 verse 8 says, But God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Now just look at that. He died for us while we were sinners. For every single person on earth that was born in sin. No one on earth was born without sin. But for everyone born in sin, Christ died for them. Why? Because God loves them. That's why he died. There's no other reason. That's a simple answer. Whoever you are, 
wherever you find yourself, whatever situation you may be in, whatever you are doing, no matter how bad you may be described as a person, no matter how terrible your life may be, no matter how awful the things you have done, he still loves you. Why? Because Christ died for you because of the love of God. He died for you because the Father loved you. And that is a love that is an amazing love. If no one else loves you, know the Father loves you. If no one else will give up his life for you, know that the Father asked his son to lay down his life for you. To pay the price that you and I had to pay. The father asked his son to lay his life down. And the son freely laid down his life for you and I. Because of the love that the father has for us. Now you need to look at the love that God has for us. The Bible says that Christ died for us while we were sinners. Now, if someone who's not a human being looks at us and observes the things that we're doing, let's take for instance the things that happened on the 7th of October last year when Israel was invaded by Hamas and the atrocities that were committed. And in turn, the thousands of people that died as a result of the bombing of Gaza, the thousands of innocent children that were killed and women that were killed as a result of Israel attacking Gaza, now, this is horrific. You know, when you, when, you, when you decide, I'm going to bomb a place, knowing there may be innocent people. In your mind, yes, we must do it because of what happened on the 7th of October. Now, no matter who is responsible for whatever happened, no matter how worse the one act is than the other act. In spite of what they do or did, God still loves them. Christ still died for them while they were yet sinners, while they're doing what they were doing. He still loves them. And that's the amazing thing about God. No matter who you are, Every single person in the world. Let me make it clear. God not only, God does not only love Christians. If you were thinking like that, get it out of your mind. Christ did not die for Christians. Get it out of your mind. Christ died for every single human being. Why? Because God loves every single human being, no matter what religion they belong to. They can be Muslim, they can be Hindu. They can be whatever religion they come from. God loves them. And so when we look at people, and we are biased against them because they belong to some religion. God doesn't like what they do. But he created them. And he loves them. And Christ, Christ died for them. Osama bin Laden, who is seen as the worst and the most horrible person in the West. Christ died for him too. God loved him too. 
Jesus paid the price for our sins. Why? Because God loves us. Jesus paid the price for our sins. Why? Because we could not save ourselves. There may be many people that think that humanity can save themselves. That human beings can maneuver their own salvation. But there's no way that you and I or any human being can maneuver their own salvation. Not socialism, not communism, not any other ism can bring salvation into your life or into my life. Ephesians 2 verse 8 says, For it is by God's grace that you have been saved from judgment and given eternal life through faith. And this is not of yourselves, but it is the gift of God. It is a gift. We cannot save ourselves. There's no way that you can say, if I live a good life, I can save myself. The Bible says no one is good. There's no one that is good. All of us were born in sin. And all of us fall short of the glory of God. So there's no way that we can save ourselves. Someone had to pay the price. Someone had to come to save us. And the only way that could take place was because of the love that God has for you. God loves you. The sacrifice of animals could not save us. Hebrew, Hebrew 10 verse 4 says, For it is not possible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. They tried it. It seemed to work. It seemed, but it didn't really work. Because every year, every time, they had to sacrifice more animals. There were times when the king would sacrifice thousands of animals. Imagine if they did that today. You would have all the animal lovers on your head. And so the Bible says that it is not possible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. Their sacrifice was not able to pay the price of our sins. No matter how many animals they kill, no matter how many sacrifices they took part in every day, every week, it could not pay the price for our sins. It couldn't. The law of Moses could not save us. And it was a great set of laws that Moses, through God, brought into the people of Israel. It allowed them to live according to a certain set of rules. But you and I know both that people never obey rules. Amen? If it says 80 on the M5, how many of you obey the rules? I saw Grand the other day. Don't worry, he wasn't speeding. I just saw him the other day. I didn't say he was speeding. <laughs> You're jumping to your own conclusion. But the law could not save us because nobody was able to follow the law perfectly. Nobody. So, no matter what set of rules you draw up, no one will be able to follow it perfectly. Even the laws of our country. Nobody. 
Nobody can. So Romans 8 verse 3 says, The law of Moses was unable to save us because of the weakness of our sinful nature. So God did what the law could not do. He sent his own son in a body like the bodies we sinners have. And in that body, God declared an end to sin's control over us by giving his son as a sacrifice for our sins. And so God saw we could not save ourselves. The blood of animals could not save us. The law of Moses could not pay the price for our sins. And so he sent his son. God needed a perfect sacrifice. That's what he needed. A perfect sacrifice. And a perfect sacrifice was not the blood of animals. Was not the law of Moses. That perfect sacrifice was not us thinking that we can conjure up our own salvation. No, that perfect sacrifice was Christ, the Lamb of God. John 1 verse 29 says, The next day John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Look, the Lamb of God who takes away what? The sins of the world. Not the sins of Israel. Not the sins of good people, not the sins of Christians, but it takes away the sins of all the peoples of the world. He needed a perfect sacrifice. For who? For you and I. And so he couldn't use animals anymore. He needed someone that would be able to take all the sins of the whole world on himself without sinning. None of us could do it. If you ask me, Pastor, do you sin? I'm not going to lie to you and say, I don't sin. Who among us is without sin? Who among us is perfect. None of us are perfect. So he needed a perfect sacrifice and that perfect sacrifice was Christ Jesus, the Lamb of God. And so what happened? Jesus paid the price for our sins. God made him to be sin for our sake. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 21. For our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Now this is how you need to look at this. Christ is next to God, his father. Because he was with God from the beginning. And God is looking at the world. A world that is going astray. A world that is doing all kinds of things. Horrible things. And God is looking at ways and means of bringing them that he created back to him. And so now what does he do? He's not looking for a perfect sacrifice. He finds a perfect sacrifice where? In his son. And what does he do? He sends Christ to the earth. Christ comes and he dies in my place. There's an old song that says, He paid the debt he did not owe. I owe the debt that he paid. So Christ took my sins 
on him. Now you must remember, I was born in sin. Now, the fact that I never took drugs, the fact that I was never a drinker of alcohol, the fact that I was never a smoker of cigarettes, I never did soft drugs or hard drugs, the fact that I never went to a nightclub, never ever in my life, so that's why I don't know how to dance, doesn't make me a good person. I was born in sin. I was born in sin. And so, no matter who you were, no matter what you did, Christ took your sins upon himself. The Father made him who knew no sin, sin for my sake. Sin for whose sake? For your sake. So we now personalize it. That I'm not looking at someone here or someone here. No, I'm looking at myself. The Father made him sin. He took my sin and he put it on him. And Jesus was willing and allowed what I did, all my sins, to be transferred onto him. And so that is why I have an individual, personal relationship with him. Because he took my sins upon him. I don't have a relationship with him because of all of you. I have a relationship with him because he took my sins. So when I stand before him, I'm grateful he changed your life. But I stand before him and I say, thank you, Lord, that you took my sins away. And you bore it in your body on the cross of Calvary. Imagine being someone that knew no sin, that had no sin. Imagine someone that lived a life we don't know where. Because the Word of God tells us that in the beginning was the Word and the Word was God and the Word was with God. So we don't know the past. Right up to the moment when he was born as a human being. Imagine what Christ had to go through when he experienced birth and coming into a sinful world. He who knew no sin became sin. For our sake. I find it difficult to try and, 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 and get you to understand or try and make it clear to you the process of living in a sinless environment and suddenly finding yourself in an environment totally conquered by sin. The change from that environment to him coming into a sinful world and having to experience every temptation that you and I were ever exposed to. Every experience that we were exposed to. There are certain things that we think, ah, it's part of life. You know, if I stub my toe, it's part of life. If I knock my head, it's part of life. And all the unpleasant things that we sometimes have to endure as human beings. Christ never knew that. Christ never knew what it was to go hungry, to become thirsty, to become tired. You know what it is to become tired. 
Christ never knew what it was to make use of eau de cologne, scent, bubble bath, oils. He never knew what it was to use those things. And yet, He was exposed to all of that. College student. And I went to go and preach one evening at a, a haven in Cape Town. This was in 1977. And I stepped into that place right in Cape Town in centers uh, in the CBD and I stepped into that place and there were people sleeping all over and they were swearing and they were going on and there were some fights breaking breaking out and when I stepped into that place the smell the smell overwhelmed me and I said to myself why didn't you Take your handkerchief at home and spray it with all the spray. So that when you come in there, you just put it like here and you can smell your, your perfume. Now, imagine Christ walking among all the unwashed bodies. He did it all for you. He did all of that for you. What is the Bible saying? So God did what the law could not do. He sent his own son in the body like the bodies we sinners have. Same body. Christ did not have a super body. He had to wash every day. He was not immune to that. He had to wash. He had to rinse his mouth. Just a body like this. He had to do everything that you and I do in this body. He had to do it. So in every single way, he had to be human. And he did it for your sake. He who had no sin. He who had never gone through all of it. He did it for your sake. And sometimes we take for granted things that Christ did. But I want to say to you, Jesus paid the price for us. Jesus paid the price for your sins. Why? To bring us near to God. Romans 5 verse 8. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, it is much more certain having been reconciled that we will be saved by his life. Jesus paid the price for our sins. Why? So that you and I could be reconciled to God. We are his creation. He created us. He made us. And then we sinned. That is our father Adam and our mother Eve. They sinned and we, we moved away from God. And there was this distance between us and God and all the time the father was looking for ways to bring us back to him and the blood of goats and bulls and animals could not do it and the law of Moses could not reconcile us to the father and we ourselves, whatever pitiful means and ways we try to get back to God, we couldn't. 
We could not be reconciled to God by any means. No matter how much money you give. No matter how many good deeds you do. No matter how many times you come to church. That was not going to reconcile you with the Father. There was only one way. And that was Jesus. His death was the only way to reconcile us to God. There was no other way. Absolutely. Even when the young man came to him and he said to him, what must I do? And the Lord told him, this is what you must do. Uh, uh, do, you, did you, do you follow the commands? And he says, yes, I've been doing that from my young days. And the Lord said to him, well, there's only one thing that you need to do. Sell everything you have and give it to the poor. But he was not willing to do that. He was not willing. And so he was not willing to be reconciled to God. But thank God. Jesus reconciled us. Colossians 1 verse 20 says, And through him, that is Christ, God reconciled everything to himself. He made peace with everything in heaven and on earth by means of Christ's blood on the cross. By means of Christ's blood. On the cross. God's son Jesus. Paid the price. For our sins. And made us. Free. This morning we're going to serve you with the cup. And the bread. It is not something. That we always do. Sometimes time in the month it's a reminder of the price he paid it's a reminder that you and I are unworthy of the price he paid it's a reminder that it's only by grace a gift of God that you and I are here and that we are in a relationship to, with him where we are. We have been reconciled because he paid the price. There's nothing more that you need to do. For those of you who are still struggling to get rid of certain things, Jesus paid the price. He made you free. You are free. Don't believe me. Believe the word of God. You are free. Jesus paid, uh, paid the price for our sins and made us free. You don't have to say, oh, I must still, I must still give up this and I must still give up that. No. There's nothing that you have to give up. He set you free. He delivered you. He paid the price. Whatever is still bothering you, whatever you are still attached to, whatever you are still doing, He paid the price for that. You are free. You've been set free. You don't have to wait and say, I still need to be set free. I still need to be reconciled to the Father. His death has reconciled you to the Father. He paid the price for your sins. Jesus paid it all. You know that song, when, when I look for when, When but the after. When you know that song, Jesus paid it all. Let's sing that song if you know it. And just before we go over to the table of the Lord, 
I want you to just trust God. Amen. Trust God. Whatever has happened in your life, whatever is happening in your life, Jesus paid the price. He paid the price to set you free. He paid the price for your sins. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Let's just close our eyes for a moment. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Almighty God. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to pray for you this morning. And this morning, if there's anyone that needs prayer, anyone that says, Pastor, please pray for me. Please pray for me, Pastor. Right where you are, just stand to your feet. And I'm going to believe this morning, whatever it is that you need to be set free, if the Son has set you free, you are free indeed. Just stand to your feet and I'm going to pray with you while they sing that song for us. Jesus Hallelujah. Yes, thank you, Jesus. All to Him I owe. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. If you need prayer, just stand to your feet and I'm going to pray with you. Sin has left a crimson stain, but he was. Almighty God, Jesus Hallelujah. prayed it all. Oh, Jesus. Oh, to him I oh, Jesus. Sin has left the crimson stain, but he was in white as snow. Let's sing it one more time. Jesus, oh, Jesus prayed it all. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, to him I know. Almighty God. Sin has left the crimson stain, but he was still white as snow. Jesus, Jesus, Lord, has lost the crimson stain, but He was white as snow. Dear Father, I come to you this morning. And I thank you because of your love. Jesus paid the price for our sins. Thank you that you love us, love us irrespective of who we are. Thank you that you love us irrespective of our conditions, our status. Thank you for your love, Father. And I bring those who are standing even those who have responded through live streaming on Facebook and YouTube. And I pray this morning that you will touch them. Pray that your hand will come upon them. Pray, Holy Spirit, that you will touch them right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. And amen. Let's sing that song again. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. Jesus paid it all, oh, to be my Sin has lost the crimson stain, but he was his wife. Jesus paid
his blood was that his blood of another spotless land but his blood was precious blood for he washed the sins of men and his blood heals my body and saves my spirit I'm so glad His precious love still flows from Calvary. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Worship your holy name. Who had believed our report and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed for he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of dry ground he had no form or comeliness and when we shall see him there is no beauty that we should desire him he is despised and rejected of men a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief and we hid it as were our faces from him he was despised and we esteemed him not Jesus Surely he had borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord had laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. Thank you, Jesus. He's brought as a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep before her shearers is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. We shall declare his generation. For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people was he stricken. And he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death because he had done no violence neither was any deceit in his mouth yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him he had put him to grieve when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin he shall see his seed he shall prolong his days and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see of the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he had poured out his soul unto death. 
and he was numbered with the transgressors and he bared the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. We give you thanks. We give you praise. We give you glory Hallelujah. and we give you honor, Lord. We bless you, Jesus. We thank you. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, we bless you, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord. For a moment, let the verses of Isaiah chapter 53 just let it roll over your mind. Over and over and over. Hundreds of years before Christ died, the prophet foretold the kind of death that he would die. All because of you, all because of me, all because. The Father loved us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. My God. Oh, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. I'm going to ask Sister Farland just to pray the blessing of the Lord on the table of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, Father God, this morning we come before you, oh Father God, with thankful hearts this morning, oh God. Thank you, Father, that this table is a reminder, oh Father God, of what you have done on the cross of Calvary for us, Lord Father God. Lord, thank you, oh Father God, that every step you took to the cross, toward the cross of Calvary, you thought of us. Every step you thought of us, oh Father God. Lord, you endured scorning and shame, oh Father God. You endured the suffering, but you thought of us, Lord. Thank you, oh God, for the price that you have paid. Lord, you did it all for me, yes. all for us this morning. And so we thank you, Jesus, from the bottom of our hearts. We thank you. And so, Lord, as we take from this table this morning, as we eat the bread and drink the cup, let us remember, let us be reminded of that price that you paid. Let us be reminded of the love that you have for us. And let us be reminded that there's nothing that we can do or have done that, can, that you can love us less, oh God. So, Lord, bless this table. Bless it to our bodies, oh, Father God, and our bodies to your service, oh, God. In Jesus' name, amen. In the night in which the Lord was betrayed, he took bread, and after he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same manner, after the supper, he took the cup and said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in the remembrance of me. For whenever we eat and we drink, we bring to remembrance the death of Christ. And we give him praise. And we give him glory. Amen. The worship team sings a song while you will be served with the cup and with the bread. Two.
so amazing, so amazing, your love for us is overwhelming, our awesome is our God. So amazing, so amazing, your love for us is overwhelming, how awesome is our God. So Oh, oh, oh. 
at the cross you rescued us and at the cross you rescued us Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Chris, just to thank the Lord for us being able to partake of the bread and drink from the cup. Yara danki that ons to 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 to. Heere, dankie dat ons op die punt kan gaan kom met dat u vir ons weer laat ons herhinder vir die bloed en die sal liggaan met u vir ons gestuur het. Dankie dat u vir ons vry kom maak het, heere, van al onze sonde. Ek bid heere dat u vir ons al verder dra en dankie vir ons in Jesus naam. Amen en amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Thank you. We are going to release you soon. Um, just want to say thank you to everyone that supported the outdoor campaign financially. 
Thank you to everyone that pledged. If you pledged and you haven't um, sent in your pledge money yet, please do so now. I'm going to ask Carmen just to flight the banking details. And all you do is you just put down a campaign and your name, and please deposit the money into the banking account. Um, if you haven't pledged yet, um, there's still time for you to pledge. And uh, if you haven't given yet, there's still time for you to give. And we will appreciate it if you will still consider to give uh, something towards covering the expenses of the outdoor campaign, which I will say that um, through the grace of the Lord and the power of the Holy Spirit was a huge, huge blessing oh, and Amen. success. Amen. Amen. Thank the Lord for the souls uh, that came to salvation. And we're looking forward to um, somewhere in summer to have another big outdoor campaign. And we would like to see all of you there when it is summer. It was a bit windy. It was a bit cold. Uh, but you know, that was wonderful. It was wonderful in spite of the cold. And we thank the Lord for the people that got saved. And so we ask you, please, um, if you do have, please contribute towards the expenses of the campaign we had. And um, we will give you uh, some feedback uh, next week. Um, they will be having a meeting to discuss it. And then we'll come back to you and we'll tell you exactly what happened. And... Um, Sunday morning, we will have uh, those who spearheaded the campaign. They will come back and they will come and say thank you to all the people that contributed. And we will also tell you Sunday morning how much money we raised for the campaign. But I, I can assure you that by Sunday, we'll have more than enough money to cover all the expenses that we have. There are one or two or three items that wasn't part of the budget. And so we kind of went over the budget of 20,000 Rand, but we thank the Lord for the generosity of the people of Blessed Hope. Um, there's always people who are willing to give to God's work. So if you haven't given yet, please make sure you make use of the banking details or take an envelope uh, out on the foyer and just put down your name and outdoor campaign, and we know that it will go directly to that. This morning, I also want to give a shout out to my youngest son, our baby son. Uh, he was born on Good Friday, and he celebrates his born day today. And that's why, and that's why his name is Joshua, uh, because he was born on Good Friday. Amen. Praise God. So now we're going to close, and we want to send you out before 10 o'clock. And you can say, yeah, see, it's the care of the care, 10 o'clock, I come you. Four, 10 o'clock. So we're going to send you out. Praise the Lord. So would you stand as we going to close in prayer? And we are going to ask Elder Sidney, and we're going to ask his dear wife to close in prayer and to do the benediction for us as well. I always leave it up to them to decide who's going to do what. Let us close our eyes. Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you, Father God, for your blessings that rest upon us. Thank you, Lord, that we can be mindful this morning of this day that we celebrate the sacrifice that your son Jesus Christ has made for us. Lord, I pray that you will bless us further as we go into this day in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Come, let's receive the benediction. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the sweet fellowship of his Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. And we who love the Lord this morning will say, Amen. God bless. Amen.